Chapter 18, Mastering the Mental. As I've grown myself and my business, I've realized that there's one thing more than any other that I wish I'd known much earlier in my life and that I wish I could instill in every single person I know. And it's this, you really are in complete control of your life and your future. And the difference between the life you have and the life you want is all in your head, literally. Here are a few more things that fall under the category of what I wish my younger self had known. Number one, self-talk is as important as physical practice. Two, visualization can change the future. Three, bad and unpleasant things will happen, but there's always something to be grateful for. Four, the only limits are the ones you place on yourself. Five, your circle matters. Six, judge less and listen more. Seven, daily affirmations spoken out loud will imprint on your mind. I remember the first time I truly understood the power of my mind. I was in my late teens and I was taking private lessons with my racquetball coach, Pete. We were working on a forehand drill using one of the cans of balls to be a target. I took some practice swings to get the muscle memory to kick in and then started the drill. I hit the cans a few times, not as often as Pete thought I should, and then I made some smart ass comment about it being hard and not being able to master it. I groused that of course it was easier for him. He'd been playing racquetball for something like 17 years, which by the way was as long as I'd been alive. So that was like forever. He couldn't expect me to be that good yet. He told me to grab the bandana off my racquetball bag and come back into the court. As I re-entered, I saw that he'd taken the two blue racquetballs out of their can and was setting up the empty can against the front wall. Okay, he said, take a good look at where the can is. After giving him side eye, I did as I was told. Then he instructed me to put the blindfold on. Mm, this was getting a little weird. Now he said, hit the can. What? I lifted the blindfold from over one eye and came back at him with my trademark sass. Pete didn't blink. You said you saw it. Now visualize it again in your mind exactly where you saw it and drill it with your forehand. Now how in the world am I supposed to make contact with the ball I am holding in my hand, let alone hit a target I can't even see, I thought. Go ahead, Pete prodded. So I took another good look at the can against the wall, lowered the blindfold, and tossed the ball up as I would without the blindfold, and hit it. I heard the ball hit the front wall. Close, Pete informed me, as he went and chased the ball down. I'd hit and returned it to me. Try again. I visualized where I'd seen the can, and then replicated the motion, and almost instantaneously, I heard the can explode. I ripped off the blindfold to see the can with a massive dent, and the blue rubber lid laying just close to it. The grin on my face was almost as big as the one on Pete's face. Wow, that was super empowering.